So, salam merdeka. Actually, we supposed to 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 have a flag uh, yesterday. Yeah. Uh. If we had the the uh, live yesterday, we will have a this a flag uh, waving to you. You know. Anyway, salam merdeka to you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good morning. Or good evening. If let's say you are watching us uh, in the uh, any part of the world, yeah. So, uh, myself, uh, CC Lee here, and then we have Ken Leong. I'm Ken Leong. Yeah, all the while, both of us are doing the live session with you. And thank you for watching. This is our third, uh, 13. Yeah, 13. Yeah, this is our 13 uh, uh, live sharing. Uh, most of our live sharing, it, will, it won't be running away from uh, AI and IoT and some of the technical stuff. Yeah, so um, this round we are going to share, share with you. I think today we are going to share with you more on the... Again, we come back to this uh, smart manufacturing. We come back to industrial uh, industrial revolution. You know, we are going to touch that part again. I think, you know, we had the uh, Chinese version. We, we talked in... We, we, we had a, a live session oh, so yeah. with this uh, our consultant, uh, Ricky, together. Uh, that part, we will just hang on for a while. Yeah, so we were talking about the uh, industrial four, uh, IR four. Uh, how does for our session we want to bring? How does this AI or IoT that able to 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 transform the or, or to 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 enhance the IR four transformation? Yeah. So I hope you know some of you who are in the especially on the manufacturing side, uh, some SME or or some of the what it call uh, any industry that relate you know you apply ir4 in the whole process maybe that will be uh, more i mean uh, 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 i mean the, you, that that will be able to connect better yeah so uh okay so before we start i think uh, we had a, a event in malacca in utem yeah, went back to this uh, uh, Ken Leong's uh, uh, university again. He did his master there. So we were we met up with uh, Professor Dr. Lim, <laughs> and also we met up with uh, uh, some uh, a VIP, a very very important person uh, presenting his uh, what he called the the uh, more on the AI science uh, or data analytic in. And manufacturing, yeah, from actually from uh, data brick, you know, uh, Dr. Bala, you know, very interesting uh, sharing by him. So along the the whole session, I think, what do you get most? Uh, you know, maybe we can discuss about this part. Mm, so the session talk about the uh, some history relating to the data brick. Okay. And also some use case on how other companies they use the data break to help them to uh, in their business. Mm. Yeah. And then I also realized the data break also might be able to save our especially those in the software development engineering engineering. Yeah. So it can help you save a lot of time. So because their solution actually is quite complete. But yes. so far, I already go into some of their documentation mm. on how to use the data brick. Mm. And I found that it's quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because basically, data brick serve the Fortune 500 or thousands of the uh, company in the world. So I think uh, we are very lucky to have uh, Dr. Bala sharing with us, even some company like Rolls Royce. Not the, the car, not the Rolls Royce car, but uh, the Rolls Royce engine. Yeah, it's company like Rolls Royce engine, Mercedes Benz, and some of the big names. Uh, uh, even Petronas, okay, okay. Yeah, it's also one of the topics that we, we were discussing. But uh, the most uh, catchy part about the thing is, uh, I think, you know, because we were talking about, but later on, we are going to talk about this uh, predictive maintenance. I didn't know that the predictive maintenance also can be used. The, the model, the predictive maintenance in the machine learning or AI model can still be used in the actual operation. No need to be, uh, you know, those this model no need to be 
applied only on some equipment or pump and things like that. You can use the same model to apply in a, a different application. You know, for example, in this case, they are talking about the delivery of UPS, you know, on the logistic side. Yeah, logistic. So whether you are able to meet the uh, uh, time schedule or, or uh, whether you are able to meet or be not able to meet, you know, you can use the model to do some prediction. Yeah. So with the right model, you can actually tune certain parameter or in your operation to, uh, to, to make sure your, your delivery is more punctual or you, you are able to meet the uh, delivery schedule. Uh, this part actually is quite unique that I, I learned most. And then the second part is about, because this is about digital transformation, you know, it's about this uh, IR4, it's related to IR4. That's why maybe we want to just uh, uh, take some time to just uh, discuss about this topic. Yeah. And then the, the, the other part, I, uh, yeah, uh, the, the other the other word that I, I, I'm very interested about this one part is uh, digital twin. Yeah, digital twin. So there are actually many, many models. Yeah, digital twin, as you know, if you trace back, you know, that was used in NASA, you know, before, before they want to launch a rocket, you know, they actually do the simulation model. Or in this case, uh, AI, you know, is being used as one of the core uh, 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 core algorithm to do to build the digital twin. Meaning, you know, you are actually can, you are able to simulate, you know, virtually on the actual process. You know what's going on. So those and that not able to handle by the actual system, you can put in any parameter to simulate what to to see what is the response. Yeah, that that digital twin also is a very uh, interesting uh, part, especially when you are talking about in the, the future manufacturing, you know, high expectation, you want to run the thing, you can't fail, you know, digital twin is one of the area. So, okay. Again, uh, <laughs> thank you for watching. Uh, you are watching the uh, Jom Les Senmang AIoT. Uh, we have started to have more subscriber every time we see some friends, you know, of course, we don't force them. Lah. We just ask them to subscribe only. <laughs> we don't force. Okay. Um, coming back to the... Uh, okay. Uh, this part, maybe today we are going to talk about some... Okay. I, of course, AIoT, you know, how it can... Uh, how does it impact the uh, industrial for revolution? And also, we are going to have a, a small demo. This demonstration, this demonstration was uh, brought to Malacca the other day. So we brought it up. Uh, we just re, uh, replay that for you again. Yeah. So I hope uh, you enjoy. So coming back to this uh, industrial uh, fourth revolution, um, there are four principles uh, that I've been talking to, to, to many times in some of the live sessions. So uh, there are four main uh, principles. One of them is the data transparency, yeah, data transparency. The second one is the uh, interconnectivity or interconnection, yeah, this internet connection. And then the third one is the decentralization, yeah, decentralization plus a technical assistant. So you talk about interconnection, let's say the first one. Interconnection, how can you, why, why this uh, IR4 uh, needs this kind of uh, good interconnection? What are the, 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 the new thing or technologies that is able to facilitate this part? If you look at IoT, IoT play a very good uh, role, uh, especially on in terms of connectivity. Uh, that part actually fulfill one of the uh, requirement in the Ford IR4 revolution principle. Yeah. So interconnection. Interconnection talk about in IoT we do data collection, real-time data collection from a shop floor, from a manufacturing floor. All this data, what, what is the use of all this data? Because uh, 20 years ago, we, we talk about data collection. You know, every time we say, oh, this is a shop floor, data collection, collection, data collection. You know, what is actually that for? If you, if you go deep inside into the machine learning AI, you will realize how important is the data collection. Is it, is it like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that thing become your 
or uh, can I say uh, that become a, 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 a what it call data set lah? The, the, you, you that become a very important uh, data yeah. that allow you to build the model. It's the input for the machine learning. Algorithm. Yeah, is it the dog food? It's not the dog food <laughs> <laughs> because I think Doctor Balan mentioned about dog, this dog food. Is this a you know? So this data set is very important for you to tailored a uh, model so that you can optimize or you can do further uh, 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 what you call a forecast forecasting is also one of them that is a uh, uh, forecasting of course all this while we were talking about only uh, machine uh, not machine learning we are talking about re ai deep learning on vision part you know we we we, we, we seldom yeah one or twice uh, huh, on the, this uh, predictive maintenance we, we did talk about this uh, vibration you know how does it affect or uh, how can you use the vibration sensors you know vi vibration data to do the predictive maintenance that is machine learning on the machine learning not so much on the vision ai yeah so the uh, the second part is the data trans trans transparency how can you do data transparency with iot or or ai yeah of course ai uh, you are able to uh, data transparency is very important okay um, yeah especially on the iot how can you do a, a good data uh, it's, it's actually interrelated yeah how can you do a, a good data transparency is uh, you can share information among uh, machine to machines machine to human you know uh, sensors to, to to a machine or sensors to controller control to a machine and so so forth so on and so forth. so this part actually give you a good data transparency so that uh as you know in the ir4 what is the most important uh, you know, in terms of automation we don't call it automation we call what uh, autonomous ah we call it autonomous because we want it to be operating by itself you know no, not only you know in the same cell you know but it has to be connected to other cells to perform the autonomous part so exchanging information in the data transparency in this part is uh, of course is very important yeah so um uh the third one will be the decentralization decentralization uh that how how, how do you relate this the decentralization in most of the uh, uh, what in some of the application you know, for example in this case uh, you have this uh, uh iot iot you need a h you know uh, edge device yeah edge we call it edge device because you know it's from the cloud you know it's at the edge of the cloud yeah because the whole iot ecosystem is talking about the whole uh, cloud you know to the to the, to your ot you know ic iit you know edge do uh play its role in terms of doing some decision making yeah that's why uh, the you know it is allowed the decentralization for example later on we're going to show you the vision ai you know on the abnormally detection all those things these are also part of the edge and then it is able to make certain decision within itself you know within within the cell itself so so that part that kind of decentralization that we are uh, talking about so if you have any comment you know please do uh, share with us may we may have a, a, a task this part wrongly maybe you can also give us a comment of course the, the last part is a technical assistant in the whole IR4 design principle, technical assistant is able, you know, the system is able to give you a very quick prompt uh, 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 guide or assistant to tell you, you know, what to do next. Yeah. So this, that is also very important. Yeah. Because uh, in the autonomous kind of uh, operation, you know, certain time uh, things are happening very fast. So this kind of prompt data, uh, this uh, technical assistant become very crucial. So that actually relate, you know, you can see how AI and IoT play uh, its uh, role in the whole uh, fourth industrial revolution transformation and so on. Yeah, this part actually uh, is very important. So um, we also talk about what are the things that we, we mentioned uh, you know, uh, in the last uh, session. We did uh, Spark Factory. We talked about uh, OEE, yeah? uh, OEE uh, overall equipment uh, efficiency or effectiveness, yeah, OEE, that can be assisted from the IoT and AI point of, 
uh, part of it. So that can be done that way. And then we also shared about some, uh, what they call the um, predictive maintenance. Uh, mm. uh, that one we, we are showing what? Uh, we are showing using the vibration sensor to oh, vibration sensor. detect the abnormally. Mm. Then because when this abnormal occur, then uh, based on the abnormal result, we can mm. predict uh, the machine still got, it can still operate for how long. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, so that is only one part of abnormally. Actually, predictive maintenance uh, require more data set than just a vibration sensor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that is something that is uh, a very useful, very useful case in the the whole IR4 car implementation. These two are the one of the two major. Of course, uh, ranging from uh, data collection, let's say from a temperature point, you know, how can you connect all this temperature or you want to connect this pressure, you know, uh, pressure parameter, you know, on the shop floor and what are the voltage, current, you know, energy usage, all those things. These are also part of the uh, 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 area of IR4 where we want to do the digital transformation. Yeah. So with all this data, you know, plus the well, the AI, uh, plus the AI algorithm or machine learning, you can actually do a better forecast, a better optimization. Yeah. Uh, in most of your operation. Yeah. So I think uh, I just want to show you because uh, we have been running this one for. The, the 13th session uh, maybe want to share with you uh, this part we are going to have a, a, a this uh, this is something interesting here okay we are going to share with you on uh, one of the uh, this uh, AIOT workshop yeah we are going to have a, this AIOT workshop this workshop is for two hours you know uh, usually we charge but for this case we are opening to all uh, our follower or those people who are, who watch this uh, thing, uh, this uh, our live session. You know, you can scan the QR code, and then you can register with us. Yeah. So we are going to have this uh, two weeks once. Yeah, two hours uh, workshop, uh, a live work workshop. Uh, not online. Uh, not online. Uh. you have to come here because over here in our lab here we have a uh, we have a small lab. Uh, that can accommodate about 10 people. Lah. Usually, I would say six or seven, eight, mm -hmm. eight people, lah. Eight, eight person, it would be good. Yeah. So, you know, you can join us and then come and learn some, some of this AI, uh, IoT. You know, we have all, we, we, so, so far, we have, we have demoed so, so many. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. We have de de demoed so, so many to you on the AI and IoT. Uh, we have all these gadgets. You don't need to bring anything. You can... You know, if you're interested, you can join us, you know, to do. But uh, of course, uh, we will give a priority to uh, those who are, you know, really uh, into this uh, area because, uh, you know, after learning this one, if let's say you are able to apply straight away, that is fantastic. Yeah. So uh, we will give priority to others. You can uh, su subscribe, you know, I can, can scan and then you subscribe to us on. We will, we will come come to you later. So, so that is about my part. So, you know, maybe I can pass on to you. You can uh, tell our audience what are the things that you're going to show yeah. to them. Okay. So, okay. Uh, I think we'll show the that camera view. Okay. So this the demo that we bring to Malacca. Few days ago, so this one is uh, we have a camera, and then doing the PCB inspection here. Yeah. So before that, you know, before that, we 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 just want just to speak speak a little bit about this mm -hmm. one. I think in the session number seven, you know, we did show something like that before. Yes. Yeah. And then this this uh, so called station, yeah, abnormally vision uh, this. Uh, this so-called station is uh, uh, during our this uh, demonstration with one of our, our clients. So one of our friends suggested that you know it has to be 
uh, more robust la, easier to, to operate that's why it come to this one is like a a, 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 a bird house like that <laughs> but it has got a proper lighting okay uh yeah it's very new you know very hot from the oven only two group of people have seen that <laughs> you are the number uh third yeah you are the number three okay Gilang, you can continue okay, yeah so for this one we have a jig to hold the pcb board so before this i think in our previous demo we use uh, some some cardboard to hold our board mm. And then for this one, you also can drag it out mm. and then put it inside. And then you can mount multiple camera inside. So in this case, we mount two camera. Okay, it can be more. Okay. So actually this uh, demo is similar to the previous one. We are doing the anomaly detection. So now uh, we will only focus on this IC chip. So now we switch to another view. So this one is a back sample. So you can see on the screen there, there are some solder effect, some solder joint. So the part that has the defect, it will mark with the circle, the red circle. Okay, so now I, if I change to another one, that without any defect. It become very much easier to handle right now. Yeah, last time we, we are not able to handle this part. Oh, this one, there is some defect on the show face. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just now when I look at it, I didn't see it, but the AI is able to detect it. <laughs> uh, so okay. sometimes the thing that human eye cannot see, you can source it through a camera. Mm. But this one, the solder part is all okay. Uh, but there's some scratches on the surface there. Mm. Okay. So if let's say the scratches on the surface is not something important and you want to ignore it, uh, our software able to do it, we can do uh, some masking. So mask the region that you do want to detect, uh, then it won't give you any result. You consider this one as a good sample. Mm. Okay. Okay. This part is about this uh, what you call the abnormally detection with the AI. Of course, uh, that. Uh, we were still trying to find more application for it yeah if you have uh, some application in hand uh, because we, we, we work with this uh, system integrator very often you know those people who will go to the field you know or you if you have a uh, in hand certain uh, more uh, certain problem or you want to use AI to solve especially on a vision you know, do share with us I know you know, you, you may, may, may say, you know, oh, this, these are the AOI or, or, or vision system is able to do that. Yeah, uh, that's fine. You know, but uh, quite a number of cases where vision inspection is not able to, 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 to do it, you know, the AI is able to help. So that actually complements some of the uh, actual uh, usage of the uh, vision, whether AI, AOI or, or, or this uh, AI. That actually so for this case actually it's like that uh you see when you do the pcb inspection probably one pcb inspection visual checking you know if you are in the electronics industry you probably spend about 30 seconds or 40 seconds to do spot check on thing you know then you do marking then you, you, you transfer so with vision inspection system you can do that or not of course i think you probably can you know but in the in the market you know some of our uh, our clients say, you know, it's not easy for them to, to, to perform this. That's why this AI or deep learning AI abnormally came into picture. Yeah. So we managed to do this part, you know, for this uh, sample demonstration that we put here. We, by using, right now we are using only one camera. Mm -hmm. One camera. So if we put four cameras or six cameras, you know, uh, 
So of course, when we say uh, number of cameras, you may say, oh, uh, more cameras will, will cost you money, of course. Yeah. But then uh, for AI, somehow you do not need to use a super uh, a high end kind of camera, you know, with some USB camera is also able to do, do the job for you. For, do the job for you. That's why the, the, the operating cost can be very, very, very uh, uh, yeah, quite cost, cost efficient. So by using this one, this AI or abnormal system is able to do in two seconds, you know, to do the complete checking for you in two seconds, in one batch or two seconds. So that actually reduce, you know, from one minute or 50, uh, 50 seconds to two seconds per board. You know, in one day, I as I understand from them, you know, you need to, you know, spend about uh, uh, one, uh, 50 seconds or 45 seconds to, to one minute for per board. They need to do 1,000 board. Imagine 1,000 bot, uh, the operator looking at it is so blur. So, so what happened is, uh, I think they, 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 they keep on switching. Maybe you do 50, then the other person will come in. Otherwise, the accuracy will be uh, uh, turning very low. Yeah. So that is the reason why this part of AI is able to help, you know, especially when you talk about you know efficiency in this case or, or digital transformation in this case, this is a very uh, nice good uh, case study yeah so that is the thing that we are trying to to bring to you this is the thing i bring to you of course uh, will this part of the uh, uh, case like that you know will that be in our this workshop of course for do to do this one uh, we don't just show you like that you know we will tell you what is the concept behind, you know, how do you build models and so on. Yeah, we have the complete, uh, 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 what they call the explanation for you. So for example, you know, so for this case, if these people come for a workshop, what are the things that you are going to cover, let's say, uh, uh, with them, you know, for, for this part? Okay, so for this abnormality detection with the vision AI, mm. uh, we'll cover on how you to capture a uh, prepare a good data set mm -hmm. uh, plus, uh, how the how you put the camera how you zoom in how you do the focus is very important and then uh, after that uh, we'll show you there are around 10 models mm -hmm. in our software so each different model that perform differently on different data set yeah. so we'll show you which model is most suitable for your data set so, and then uh, if you have your own sample, want to test during the workshop, you can bring your own sample. Mm. Yeah, that one is, will be more better. Yeah. Uh, on the spot, you can know whether this solution is suitable for you or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. As for the AI part, we have this, uh, we have this original setup. Like those of you who attended, you, you know, we have this object detection, you know, vision object detection that able to do the thing also, you know, you learn how, how the objective. And then do we have any classification? Uh, yes, you have the classification. The classification, but then in the workshop, normally we, we don't touch that part. Uh, because uh, in even in the reality, uh, mm. classification seldom, seldom, seldom be used. Uh. Uh, yeah. mm. Okay, okay. So, of course, we have IoT, yeah, industrial IoT. We have gateways uh, lying on the table. Uh, we have sensors for you to connect you know uh, of course two hours is very short one but it's good for you to have a quick experience and then also we have uh, this uh, cloud integration yeah cloud integration depends on which session we are going you know if let's say you you you, you sign up just now you know you you join us you know we plan for you the the the, the, the slot time slot that you can come in uh usually on the weekday lah, no no weekend lah. um we will uh, what it call uh, demonstrate to you or with some hands-on you know if let's say able to do that we have some help. so uh, it may be co covering some cloud N not all uh, not everything you know overall concept is there you know from uh, iot from the ai up to the cloud how can you integrate the cloud you know how can how, how can you realize things in the cloud like alert things like that 
Of course, we have some good uh, SCADA station here to, 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 to see. As you know, we, uh, SCADA is our, our, our this, uh, uh, past uh, many years experience in this area, especially on the distribution. So if you have any case at all, you can bring those, you know, come, come to us. We will be able to uh, uh, discuss case, case to case with you. So this kind of workshop is good for yeah. if let's say you are school level, you want to think or, or you are school level or you are uh, you finish your first degree engineering, you know, don't no need to be engineering, lah, no need to be engineer. You want to learn this part, you don't need to be engineering. Uh, as long as you know how to operate the uh, some PC software, uh, some PC you know, on the software. Uh, those things are usually run in Linux, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be run in Linux. Of course, we have also a Windows base, um, that one. But if you are a system integrator or business owner who want to see the opportunity or to get to learn what are the things that we can apply some IoT onto even your services, yeah, even your services or even your some equipment that you 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 are, you, you are providing to customer how can you in, incorporate some iot into that for remote monitoring for alert and things like that you know system integrator or, or you are actually servicing some of the manufacturing you know please uh, you are always welcome to 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 talk talk to us uh, what about those manufacturer who has their own team to run the thing yeah so you can also look at uh, Come to this workshop. You know, maybe bring your sample. How you know? How can we solve your problem? Yeah, that is also the other part that we we want to uh, take into consideration. But if you are a, a graduate, but currently haven't found any job, you know, if you think uh, this part is uh, you know uh, one one you you want you want to get to know more so that you can find a related job, please also we will consider. Yeah especially uh, in this area we will try to to, to assist also so um, yeah I think uh, today is already 507 uh, usually we our, our sharing is a short one uh, 30 minutes but is there any last thing that you want to share uh, you know? yeah uh, one last thing I hmm. before I forgot to mention is uh, our uh, the anomaly detection is only require the good sample for training hmm. Yeah, and then the bad sample is just require a few, around ten or twenty on it. Uh, but the good sample, if you want to get a satisfying result, uh, usually you starting for few hundred lah. Uh, if you can prepare few hundred good sample, then that one will be better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. I think it's not a difficult task uh, to get a good sample. Uh, usually. Yeah. So. Uh, that is the the, the part that you know trying to share. Uh. Because it's, it's different from the AOI uh, way, you know, for AI, you actually don't need, uh, you don't need to do, you know, uh, marking and those things, you know, you just give them good sample, AI, they learn it, then they will tell you, you know, what are the uh, uh, not, not good one for you. Yeah, you will be able to, to differentiate. Yeah. So uh, before I... Yeah, before we end, I think I just want to show you some of this uh, meter here. <laughs> okay, some of this meter and some of this meter. We are going to have a, a setup of in uh, non-intrusive, yeah, non-intrusive reading using AI or vision AI. Yeah, this we have already got a a, 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 a good model here. Uh, this part. You know, maybe if you come for a workshop also, you are able to see some of this uh, stuff. Yeah. And then uh, we are going, because next, next month we are going to participate in one of the exhibition. In this this month. month. Now already September. <laughs> now it's September. Oh, we are already over the Madeka. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so. This month, 19, 20, 21. Uh, so we are going to participate in this uh, Smart Nation. Exom Tech is there. Uh, you can, uh, I drop by yeah you can drop by and, and then pay us a visit at our booth so with that um uh we would like to conclude this uh session but before that you know we will always uh we always innovate you know we 
apply and then also we share and we trade. Yeah, this is one of the mission that all this while uh, we are trying to bring to you. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and then uh, we will see you in the next session, same time, same day. Uh, and most important thing is enjoy your weekend. Happy weekend. Bye-bye.